And the most common allergens are to two main foods, which is dairy and uh, the hybridised wheat of today. The wheat was hybridised in the 1950s. We will gain insights from Barbara O'Neill, a renowned naturopath and health educator known for her deep understanding of natural remedies and holistic health. Barbara has spent decades researching and teaching about the profound connection between diet and health, offering practical, natural solutions for a range of health challenges. In this video, she will be addressing a topic that affects many people, allergies, particularly those related to wheat and dairy. In addition, at the end, we will provide an easy-to-minute recipe as an alternative. These common allergens can lead to a variety of symptoms, including digestive discomfort, skin reactions, respiratory issues, and more. Barbara will dive deep into understanding why these allergies are becoming more prevalent, how they can impact overall health, and what natural strategies can be employed to manage or even overcome these sensitivities. From dietary adjustments to lifestyle changes, Barbara will provide insights that can help you navigate these challenges and improve your quality of life. Whether you or someone you know is struggling with these allergies, Barbara's wealth of knowledge will offer valuable guidance on how to take control of your health naturally. Whether you're struggling with these allergies yourself or are simply curious about how diet impacts your health, Barbara's insights are sure to provide valuable guidance. Let's listen to Barbara explain more about how the body responds if they are allergic. And if someone has an allergy to these foods, you will see a lot more eosinophils. Eosinophils in their structure have all these little dancing bright dots in the nucleus and they're histamine, histamine granules. So if someone has an allergy and has more eosinophil, their histamine levels rise. And if someone has an allergy and they go to the doctor, what does the doctor give them? An an Antihistamines because they are basically in inflammatory. But the million dollar question, which is not often asked and should always be asked is, why are the eosinophils so high? Barbara tells us what commonly happens when people stop eating dairy and wheat. And once a person stops the dairy and the wheat, it can take two months to see a difference in the blood. And that's why I say to people, if you do have allergy, one of the most common allergy symptoms would be hay fever, uh, asthma, uh, psoriasis, eczema on the skin, hives, these are some of the allergy symptoms, yeah, weeping eyes, and some people say I've got an allergy to pollen. But I have found that when these foods are stopped, after a couple of months, there's no allergy to pollen. And I've seen people stop these foods, and I think you'll agree with me, wheat is everywhere. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. It's in just about everything. By the way, there are many alternatives to dairy, such as nut milks, but it's important to check the labels for additives. Many nut milks in the refrigerated section of the market contain a lot of additives. One option with minimal or no additives that also has a long shelf life is canned coconut milk, which is found outside the refrigerated section. Coconut milk offers healthy fats and numerous health benefits. Now, Barbara explains just how long it takes before your body responds to one stopping dairy and wheat. So a lot of people, when I say, try stopping these foods, they'll say, well, I did try and it didn't make any difference. And I say, how long did you stop for? Two weeks. That takes about eight weeks. <laughs> Now you can eat a slice of bread and it'll be out of your body in 24 hours, we hope. But the effect can remain for up to two months. So you've got to give it that little bit of time. And I did a live blood analysis on a couple one day and they were in their mid-30s. And the lady said, I know I've got an allergy to wheat and dairy. She said, I get rashes. She said, I get diarrhea. 
and she'd recently eaten the food and yes, we saw a whole lot of eosinophils. See, in, in one slide coming from one dot of, of the blood, you will often see one or two eosinophils and they light, they light up really bright. Now if someone has, has an allergy, you'll see four or five. And if someone has a severe allergy like cilia, you'll see about 21. So it is an indicator. But you know what I find? The blood just confirms what I already see in the symptoms. So I don't necessarily need to have a live blood cell analysis to, to know this. The, the symptoms tell you. And she told me before I even looked at the blood. And then I looked at her husband's blood and he also had a big rise in eosinophils. And I said, well, look at that. He said, oh, what a load of rubbish. He said, I don't get eczema. He said, I don't have diarrhea. And she looked at him and she said, but you, you fall asleep in the restaurant. Please take a quick moment to like and subscribe to this video so we may continue sharing and creating Barbara O'Neill as insights. Now Barbara will explain some of the most common symptoms of intolerance to wheat. And the most common symptom of really a wheat intolerance is brain fog sleepiness. How many people have a sandwich for lunch and they're falling asleep all afternoon? <laughs> and also bloating, bloating. And I meet so many people that live with these things and think that's just, what do they get? blame poor old age? Poor old age gets blamed for many things, doesn't it? But it's, it's not necessary. And I've had people say to me, since I stopped the wheat and the dairy, I, I, don't, I don't fall asleep in the afternoon anymore. I don't, my, my brain is clearer and uh, I don't get the bloating anymore. Is there a wheat available that hasn't been hybridized? Can you get a wheat that hasn't been hybridized? Yes, it's called spelt. Spelt is from the original wheat. Very similar to the original wheat. Also, there are non-wheat bread alternatives. Stay tuned till the end for our simple for ingredient delicious recipe. Now, Barb will tell a story of one of clients who took her advice. One lady said to me, my baby's covered in eczema. So I said to her, are you eating wheat and dairy? She said, I am. I said, well, my suggestion is to stop. A month later, she said, I've stopped and my baby still got eczema. And I said, be patient. <laughs> One more month. She emailed me exactly a month later, so that's two months after she stopped. Eczema was gone. She sent me a photo of her baby. No eczema on the skin. Another excellent nut milk option is using ground macadamia nuts. You can find ready-made ground macadamia nuts in many grocery stores. Simply add water to it per use, which helps you avoid the bad additives often found in store-bought nut milks. Just be sure to check the labels and ensure that the only ingredient listed is macadamia nuts. Barbara will now praise a pediatrician for their advice about wheat and dairy. A lady said to me recently, my grandson, he's got really bad eczema, so my daughter took him to a pediatrician. And the pediatrician said, you got to stop the wheat and the dairy. Oh, how nice to hear that a pediatrician is, is acknowledging that because many, many advise the cortisone drugs. Cortisone is a very nasty drug. And if it's used extensively over many years, it can actually start to cause the very thing that it's trying to eliminate. A person can put cortisone on a, on a bad eczema and it'll seem like a miracle drug because it'll go. But guess what happens a week later? It comes back and it comes back even worse. And also the cortisone eventually starts to, to interfere with your adrenal glands, which is where your own natural cortisone is made. You see, we live in an amazing body with, that's got an inbuilt ability to heal itself when you give it the right conditions. <clears throat> and one of the problems is when people are eating allergy foods, we get an overload of the immune system. And when you get an overload of the immune system, then you get inflammation in the body. As promised, 
Here is our two minute for ingredient bread recipe. Ingredients, three tablespoons almond flour, one tablespoon butter or oil, one large egg, and one half teaspoon baking powder. Instructions, melt butter in a microwave safe ramekin or small square glass pan. Add the almond flour, egg, and baking powder to the butter. Beat with a fork until completely mix. Microwave for about 90 to 120 seconds until firm. Run a knife along the edge and flip over a plate to release. Slice in half, then toast in the toaster or in a skillet. Enjoy. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.